Hi, this is Margaret Bird, and welcome to Color Quest, and welcome to the Snohomish River Valley. So tell me, do you go berry picking in the summer? I can tell you, honestly, that I don't think I've done this since I was a little kid. And I have literally farms just down the road from my house that are filled with all kinds of berries. So today on Color Quest, I'd like to look at the power of berries as a natural dye source. Now, they're not known for their fastness, light color wash fastness, but as you probably know, if you drop one of these berries on your white clothes, they may leave a stain. So let's look at a few of those berries that are local here to me in the summertime that you can incorporate into a natural dye or natural color project. It's great things to do with kids, lots of different things you can dye with them. It is a wonderful way to connect in with the summer bounty of berries. So join me as we pick here in the Snohomish River Valley, as well as in my local forest for some wild berries. And we'll see what beautiful colors berries may bring to us in the world of natural color. And you know what? I'm typically looking at textile because that's what I use in my art practice. But today, I'd like to take a look at a different kind of fiber that you can dye and that is wood. So I'm kind of excited to see what berries might do to provide a really cool way to stain or dye wood. Last week on Color Quest, I was out in my local forest and I noticed that the blackberries, the wild blackberries, are beginning to ripen. So that gave me the idea that there are quite a few berries in my local area beyond the blackberries that grow wild, including blueberries and raspberries. So I decided to come out to a farm where I can pick what's left of the raspberries this season. And there's just a few, but I'm the only one out here. I'd like to do a very quick shout out to Bailey Farms here in Snohomish. They have graciously agreed to let me film out here and pick the raspberries that are left. So thank you. If you can, always buy local. It's such a wonderful way to support your community and the fruits, vegetables, and other produce that you have are gonna be so much fresher. Buy local, buy organic if you can. out here. So even though I'm at a farm that grows specifically for people to come and pick, I am still using a form of ethical foraging in that I am moving across rows and rows of raspberry bushes and I'm only taking one or two from a bush and then moving on. I'm trying to spread out the picking. But if you utilize that practice of ethical foraging, you're taking enough for what you need and you're leaving some for others. People, animals, insects, so forth. So just 
I'm always gonna talk about it because <laughs> I think it's important. And I'm gonna show you what I've picked. I am picking both for eating because my son absolutely adores fresh raspberries. So I wanna bring some raspberries back for him. So you'll see in this bucket that I've picked that I will take a small portion of those to use for my dye. And the rest will just enjoy filling our tummies with some delicious fresh berries. I'm not entirely sure how much I have right now. I'm guessing it's maybe two pints. So I will keep some for food, some for dye, and I think I'll call it a day because that's about all that my son and I would be able to utilize in a short period of time. So I wanna make sure to leave some for others. We have moved on to the AgroBliss Farms, also in Snohomish River Valley or Snohomish, Washington. And now I'm in a blueberry patch. Never picked blueberries. Never been in a blueberry patch, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and run around and collect a, a small amount of berries because I'm curious to see what the difference is in the color that blueberry versus raspberry versus blackberry is gonna bring me in the dye pot. Let's go pick. All right, I've made it back into the forested area near my home in Tambark Park. And behind me is a wild blackberry bush. They are everywhere in this park. And honestly, most of them we can't even get to because the bushes are so full, but they're filled with prickers. So I have to be really careful when I collect them. So here, since these are wild, I'm going to employ ethical foraging. I will take just a handful from a few different bushes and then I'll move onward and look for some more. And trust me, they're everywhere here. So I will be sure to take just what I need for this dye project and leave the rest for others to enjoy. And as long as I'm here, I might as well jump and grab a few organ grapes. They're not berries, but last week's video, I looked at what organ grape would do in the dye pot. It was pretty spectacular color. So I thought it probably will do something pretty wonderful with wood as well. So I'm just gonna snip a few of these while I'm here, add that in as a little bonus. you they look an awful lot like blueberries but the leaves are so sharp and pokey and when I was at the blueberry patch today there was nothing pokey at all about it so these guys definitely don't want you to take their fruit or at least they want to make it a little bit hard all right there's my small bounty for Dying both wild blackberries and organ grape. We'll add those to the raspberries and blueberries and see what we get.
very quick thank you to my lovely daughter Jofi for all of her help in the studio with mashing the berries and being my model for those beautiful wooden beads. I have to say, I was really impressed with the color. So beautiful and so varied amongst the different types of berries. Two things I wanted to point out was that I tried putting the berries in for an hour and overnight and even longer. And really there was not much of a difference in the color between being in the berries for just an hour versus for several days. So that's kind of a good piece of news when you think about an option for dyeing perhaps beads as a project with your kids. They're not probably going to want to wait a few days for a result and you could make an entire day out of it, an activity of going picking and then smashing and then seeing how beautiful the bead results are in a relatively short amount of time. So I think it's a great option for how to use berries to create something really beautiful and quick and easy, right? Oh, and the other thing I wanted to point out was that I had chosen to do a hot extraction with the blueberries because when I simply smashed them, I didn't show it on camera, there wasn't much of a color, but I know blueberry can have a very vivid color. And as you saw in the results there, it was actually the darkest of the group. So when I tried just doing a cold extraction with the organ grape, even though I got some color, I didn't get much of a change to the beet there was some color, but not a lot. So I thought as an added little investigation that I would try heating and doing a hot extraction on the organ grape because I did that last week with textile and I got a beautiful color. And guess what? It did make a difference. Still not a really strong color, but a more pinkish hue but you can see the comparison between what the beads looked like and even that cold extracted organ grape did change the color to a really lovely neutral, which is always wonderful to pair with some of the other more vivid colors. So while I was picking berries, I noticed that there was an incredible flower garden also available for picking. So next week on Color Quest, I'd like to invite you out to that garden to pick some late blooming summer flowers and use them in another kind of echo print process. And I'm super curious what those beautiful summer blooms might be able to provide in the form of an echo print. So I hope you'll join me as we take another look at yet another process by which you can enjoy the beauty of natural color in all kinds of creative projects. Thanks so much for being here. Don't forget that if you're interested in joining me in my digital course, Cooking Color, the link is below and available for you to sign up and join Work at Your Own Pace. It is a 17 video workshop filled with all kinds of information about natural color, natural dyeing, as well as a full tutorial on an ombre dyed project. If you enjoy what you see on Color Quest, it's a wonderful way to support this channel and my ability to be able to continue to search the globe and share my passion with you from what Mother Nature is willing to share in terms of color. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great week. Starting over. Give me a little pressure.